So we're here with Tammy Rochelle, and she has been doing a lot of painting and jewelry making during quarantine. Tammy, hello. Hi. Nice to see you, Angie. You too. And so you said you've painted for a long time. Can you tell us how you get into how you got into that, or like how long you've been doing that? Sure. Um, all growing up, I was always painting and drawing, mostly painting and drawing um, people. And then when I was in high school and college, I took art classes, and I got a little bit more into watercolor and abstract. And then I stopped painting for about eight years, I think, and I'm not sure why. And then I went through a pretty traumatic situation. Um, I was in Australia, and I moved back to the U.S., and my mom said, hey, here's 100 bucks, go to the store, get some canvas and some paint, you need to paint, because I was really in a, a tough spot, and she, for some reason, knew that painting might kind of help me get out of that. So I started painting again, I think it was in 2006, and I've been painting, I started painting 75 paintings that acrylic abstract on canvas that year. I painted like 75 paintings, and then I just sort of painted throughout the years. This quarantine time though, I've painted like five or six hundred small paintings. So, it's been busy. So with my paintings, the ones that I've made uh, this summer mainly have been, when I don't have words to express what I'm going through, and I kind of just took different mediums like food coloring. Um, I've used food coloring, and then I've used even kitchen tools, like a basting brush, or um, really anything I can find that might make an interesting texture, and just paint it on a canvas or on paper, just all different colors, all different textures, without even thinking about what I'm trying to paint. Because sometimes when it's been really difficult, my brain, I can't even imagine what to paint, and I feel stuck. So I just started painting, getting all the expression, all the colors out, and then cutting them into small pieces looking at each piece and saying, what does this look like? Oh, I can see a woman here by the river, and then start drawing around the chaos and making order. And I think psychologically that was helpful to me, but I think in the paintings it ended up bringing something um, full of texture and expression, but also refined. And sometimes in chaos, you, in order to survive, sometimes you have to kind of rein in the chaos and find something beautiful. And so that's sort of what I was I guess that's my own therapy that I was working through. <laughs> and then how did the jewelry making come into that? Like, h when did you start doing that, or what inspired you to start doing that? I think as a child, I always liked making things and selling them at school. And I started getting into se selling jewelry, like the little uh, friendship pins. I would make the friendship uh, safety pins with the beads on them or, or bracelets or whatever. So, But actually doing it more as a artisan job, I was in Australia and I was watching a Joni Mitchell video where she was playing live and I looked at her earrings and she had these turquoise stones in her earrings and I thought, I never see earrings like that. I want to have those earrings. So I thought maybe I can make them. So I went to a jewelry store uh, or a bead store and went outside of the bench and I just made my first pair like Joni Mitchell and then friends started saying, oh I want a pair and you know, yeah. Most of my earrings are made of glass or stone or um, shell. Well, I like to use more natural type elements or whatever. I don't like to use plastic. And they're all made with surgical seals, so anti-allergy hooks on them. And some of them I've gotten around different countries. Some of them I got from Germany. I've had these little, not babushka dolls, but matryoshka dolls. I have a bunch of them that are I got from Germany. They were the cutest little bees, and some of them I purchased when I was in Australia. Um, some of them are uh, my friend Dixie. She's a she's a sweet lady. She lives in England, and a good friend of mine. And she makes jewelry and everything, so she's given me some beads too. We've exchanged some beads when I'm over there. Oh, and I got some from a friend in Germany too. So I kind of do exchanges with friends the beads and pick them up when I'm traveling around. And um, you're a musician mm -hmm. also, which, um, you know, Tammy and I were talking about off camera that she didn't get to play out this year like she normally does, and a lot of people are in that situation. Mm -hmm. So have you sort of leaned into more of these visual arts this year just to kind of replace not being able to sing live? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we had a two-month European summer tour. So I started to do more visual art and making jewelry, doing some things that occupy my creative side because, yeah, COVID wasn't easy on the creative. 
right. or independent or, you know, yeah, self employed. <laughs> right. I have been working on getting all of my paintings available to have prints on canvas and on paper. Mm, and okay. you can enlarge them and everything and we found a way to make them enlarge really well, which is really exciting. And I've been selling the earrings mainly online through my website or Facebook.